they'd stop, then after a little while, uh, your system gets used to it. And um, it actually, uh, it's uh, hallucinogenic. In the 10th century after Christ, a wandering tribe in the north of Mexico found a god idol in a cave. And the idol told them to go and look for the symbol of an eagle with a snake in its mouth, perching on a cactus, and to settle there when they found it. And the legend has it that the tribe wandered as far as the Valley of Mexico, which at that time was a lake. And on this island, which is in the middle of the lake, they saw the eagle perched with a snake in its mouth which now adorns the national flag. And they settled here. And the city became Tenochtitlan, the biggest city in the world at that time and pretty much since. Um, the Spaniards arrived in 1519, conquered Mexico by 1521. <laughs> this is the old Aztec capital, what was the, the seat of power, uh, their major temple. And right next to it, to my left, is the modern presidential palace of Mexico. There's a legend that uh, the same company of architects were commissioned at the same time to build a prison in Argentina and a palace in Mexico, and that they got the plans wrong, and that this is the prison, and that there's a very spacious uh, jail in Argentina, and here would a very cubicled palace in Mexico City. Your Aztecs used to make knives as sharp and as durable as scalpels out of obsidian is the material. An incredibly hard and, and quite beautiful black stone. Um, and out where my dad worked at the agricultural fields, every time they plowed them, it would bring up blades, bits of blades or axe heads or arrows. They used to have bags and bags of them. Uh, and some of them you get you know, sections of blade with uh, you know, properly tapered and sharpened and in good condition. Um, so they had a great set of tools. They were very, very, uh, they had very precise tools. Strangely though, they never had the wheel. They built this civilization without ever using the wheel. So the beast of burden was man. Uh, curiously, they, they made toys with wheels on for kiddies, but they never figured out to build pyramids and drag stones on wheels. It's one of the, one of the great mysteries. By that, or they just wanted to do things the hard way. Mexican modernism for the 60s. It's vast, it's like a, a James Bond headquarters. Since I was a kiddie, I probably came here for the first time when it, when it was first finished. And it sort of featured at different stages throughout my life. Um, up until it used to have a very exclusive backgammon club up these stairs. And uh, my best mate and I, of both in our time had to bail each other out for thousands of dollars um, for playing backgammon up in the club. And we both come, come up trumps though. Now it's a Japanese restaurant. The hot Mexican pink that you'll see when you arrive at this hotel is a very traditional Mexican color. And as far as I know, it, it traces all the way back to Aztec times. But it's a culture that, that uh, loves it's art and they love, they love the spaces they live in to be uh, works of art. So as a, an architectural destination, Mexico City is probably as good as you'll find anywhere in the world. The great thing about Mexico too is that nobody here, none of your waiters and, and uh, staff uh, are on their way to being pop stars or are just working while they get their doctorate in some study. 
Everyone here takes great pride in what they do. And obviously the labour the labor market is much less than London, which means that uh, the service is absolutely impeccable. I want to blow out of your mind the idea that Mexico is in any way a lazy country. If I had to pick a destination in the world where I would stay, if I wanted to spend the rest of my life in a hotel, it would be this one, for sure. The original Camino Real.